Hey, what's good, everybody? I'd like to welcome you all back to the Boombox Guru channel. I'm your host, LB. So today I have a CD update for you all. This is CD update number 18, and I'm going to be focusing on hard rock slash heavy metal. Uh, I got about five CDs here that I've bought in the past few months, and I'm just going to go through them, you know, briefly give a little background information on them and a little, little mini reviews on them, and hopefully recommend them to all of you to go out there and check out for yourselves. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. So uh, the first CD that I have, this is this is actually the debut album from Boundless Joy. Uh, I believe this album came out in April of this year. But uh, Boundless Joy, they're a hard rock and heavy metal band uh, formed by uh, Ivan DePrume, who is best known as being the ex-drummer of White Zombie. He played on their breakthrough record, uh, Le Six or Sisto. And uh, the best way to describe this band uh, their their sound seems to be a, a good mixture of like hard rock and traditional heavy metal. Uh, there's a few moments on the album where they get a little funky, uh, and there's also a few songs where they kind of lean into like alternative rock. And lyrically, like the band, their subject matter seems to be based around like fantasy and b horror type stuff, uh, very similar to what White Zombie did or even what Solo Rob Zombie does. But yeah, I really enjoyed this record. You know, I. I had watched a few interviews where uh, Ivan the Prune talked about forming this band, how they were working on music, listened to the singles that they had on Spotify, listened to the record when it dropped digitally on Spotify. And, you know, I uh, when the physical copies came available on their website, you know, I, I didn't waste any time to purchase one. But, yeah, this is a really solid album, a really solid debut. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing more music from Boundless Joy myself. So uh, if you haven't heard Boundless Joy, uh, to all you white zombie fans out there, especially ones of the sex assisto, uh, definitely go check it out. I think you will enjoy it. All right, so the next CD that I have, uh, this is Clawfinger, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind, uh, released in 1993. Uh, this is their debut album. Uh, Clawfinger, they're a Swedish rap metal band uh, formed from uh, in uh, Stockholm. That's where they're from. They're from Stockholm. And there's actually two versions of this album. Uh, I believe my version, because I bought this off of eBay, mine came from overseas, so I think this might be an original, like, overseas version, but there's also an American version that was released by uh, Metal Blade Records as well. But, uh, Def Done Blind, uh, I spent, I actually first listened to this album, like, maybe two or three years ago on Spotify, because that's how I kind of discovered Clawfinger. I was, like, on YouTube, I went down this rabbit hole, of rap metal and I discovered them and I kind of liked their style but uh I think this is one of the best rap metal albums of the 90s uh it's just a great combination of metal groove metal uh of course hip-hop and electronic music and with that blend of electronic music it also gives the band a bit of an industrial sound as well and uh Clawfinger is a band is known to be very political with their lyrics so a lot of the themes on here focus on politics, like government corruption uh, and anti-racist themes. Uh, vocalist uh, Zach Tell, like I really enjoy his cadence and delivery because to me his his uh his style is very very similar to a rapper from the Bronx. And there's a few moments on here where his whole delivery it kind of just reminds me of like Melly Mel from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. It kind of has kind of like that old school kind of cadence to it. You know, he's not the most lyrical guy. He's he's not on the level of like Zach from Rage Against the Machine. But, you know, his rhymes aren't cringy. And he's very straight to the point with his messages, man. So I can appreciate that. But definitely a great record. And, you know, I, I listen to this quite a bit because, you know, rap metal is one of my favorite genres. But I am very critical of, you know, how a lot of bands can be cringy. But this is a band that I really enjoy, and I'm glad I discovered them. So if you never heard uh, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind, definitely go check this album out. I think it's a record that really showcases how rap metal can be taken more serious as a genre, man. But a great record, man. Oh, yeah, and a fun fact. Uh, Clawfinger, I think around this time, they actually used to uh, share a rehearsal space with one of my favorite metal bands, Mashuga, uh, during this era, too. So I just thought I'd throw that tab in here, but... Yeah, Def Dumb Blind, um, if you're looking for some really good 90s rap metal, I think this is a record that uh, a lot of you would enjoy. So definitely go check that out. <clears throat> All right, so next CD that I want to talk about is uh, 
Something Bitchin' This Way Comes by Lock Up, uh, released in 1989. Uh, some sources say this album came out in 1990, but on here, it says, well, actually on the CD, it says 1990. I don't know. Some sources says 1990, others say 1989. Whatever the case is, uh, Lock Up, Lock Up was a funk metal band formed in Los Angeles, California. I think it was formed somewhere in the late 80s, maybe around 86, 87. But this band is actually best known for being, uh, for featuring a young Tom Morello prior to him forming Rage Against the Machine. And this is actually Tom right here. As you can see, this is a young Tom Morello right here. But yeah, that's what this band is mainly known for. They're known to be the band that Tom Morello was in. Before he formed uh, Mate Rage Against the Machine. And I believe Lock Up was actually his first like major label band that was signed. So uh, this record came out on Geffen Records. And it was the band's sole album because they broke up not long after it. Uh, it's primarily a funk metal album. But it does display like a few other musical styles. Like there's, there's a few hints of glam metal. Uh, of course hard rock. And then there's some bluesy numbers here and there. Uh, you also get early signs of Tom Morello's signature guitar tone. Uh, of course, this would be further de develop and popularized with Rage Against the Machine. Uh, and there's also a few songs toward the end that have like slight political leanings. You know, I think that's a bit of a foreshadowing of what Tom's focus would be once uh, Rage Against the Machine form. And you know what? I, I really enjoy this record. It's not a groundbreaking like funk metal album. Like I don't think this is a record that like. I would consider it to be like a the change the guard of folk metal or a highlight of the folk metal genre per se, but uh, it, it's a solid record. It's got it's solid music. It's great music, great songwriting. But uh, if you're a fan of stuff like uh, Living Color, Faith No More, Twenty Four Seven Spies, uh, or even if you're just a Rage Against the Machine slash Tom Morello fan, I think this is something that is definitely uh, worth you spending time listening to or even adding into your collection man but uh, yeah it's not like a groundbreaking record of that funk metal fusion genre that was happening in the late 80s early 90s but it is solid music uh it is great music man so uh definitely check this out this album is available uh for streaming on spotify which is where i was listening to it mostly before i found my physical copy so definitely go give it a listen man it's it's a great it's a great record. It's a great record if you're a fan of that era of music, that whole alternative funk metal wave that was happening back then. Okay, so next album right here. And uh, I don't know. Most people might not even know about this band or this record. So the next CD I have right here is Naked Truth. Uh, this is Fight, uh, released in 1993. Now, uh, Fight... Fight, they are a uh, a band based out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, they were formed in 1988. I think they emerged out of the city's local hardcore scene, which was interesting, man, because you know recently I've been I've been learning that Atlanta has had or has a rich rock scene, especially amongst a lot of black musicians, man. You know, examples were like Stuck Mojo that included Bones and original bassist Dwayne Fowler, uh, Follow for Now, Seven Dust, you know, LeJohn Witherspoon. Uh, of course, William Duvall, who is now the co-lead vocalist of Alice in Chains, he actually came from this Atlanta rock scene as well. Uh, interesting, though, although the band is was formed in Atlanta, the members are actually from various locations out of the United States. Uh, vocalist Doug Watts, he's from Detroit. Uh, the original bass player, who was known as simply Jeff, he was from he's from Harlem, New York. Uh, Bernard Dawson, the drummer, he's from L.A., uh, Jimmy Wesley, uh, the guitarist, he's from Savannah, but uh, but he's the only he's the only one in the band that's actually from Georgia. And then uh, their their uh, bassist now uh, Kwame Bolton, who replaced the original one, I think he might be from London. I believe that's where they found him when when the band was over, we relocated to London for a little bit. But uh, this is a great record, man. Uh, it, I think it's a bit of an underappreciated classic too, and it's usually kind of just lumped in as simply being a funk metal album. Now, funk is definitely, it's definitely like part of the band sound, but there's just so much more to their sound. I mean, there's there's elements of hard rock, there's heavy metal, there's thrash, speed metal. Uh, there's even a couple of songs on here that kind of display uh, death metal. Uh, track number two, Tormented World, that's a borderline death metal song. Uh, hardcore punk. Uh, I've already mentioned funk, but uh, jazz fusion, 
Uh, there's a track on here called Black that's a fusion of jazz fusion and like heavy metal. You know what I'm saying? Very experimental. And, uh, you know, this album came out during that whole wave where a lot of black rock bands were emerging. You know, Living Color, 24 7 Spies, Fishbone, uh, etc. But I just think that, fi that fight and Naked Truth kind of got overlooked in the midst of that. And that's unfortunate because uh, this this was a great record. Uh, you know, I was listening to it today as I was recording this video, and it was just it was just really good. And um, you know, they, they just they just knew how to have an eclectic blend with metal and all these other styles, man. But they they really lean more on the metal side. You know, this is a heavy record. You know, saying so I have to uh, I have to really make that point because unlike most of their contemporaries, you know. This album, Fight, presents a more raw and aggressive sound. But while at the same time, you know, they're they're just not afraid to think outside the box and use it be having more of an eclectic mix of whatever they're doing, man. But this is a great album right here. And uh I really wanted to talk about this, man, because I think this is an album that needs to be known more. I think the Naked Truth is a band that should be talked about as much as Living Color and Twenty Four Seven Spies and Fishbone. Cause this was a this is great metal music right here, and they really did a good job. And the band is still together, as far as I know. I actually we actually follow each other on Instagram, and uh, as far as I know, they're still together. I don't I don't know if they're doing any new music. I know they put out an album back in 2013 called The Cure, which I plan on listening to pretty soon. But definitely check out uh, their debut album uh, called Fight or their debut full length album Fight. Uh, really good man, really good record. Uh, it's on Spotify. So definitely go on Spotify, wherever you stream your music, wherever you consume music, and check this album out. It's a great listen. You won't be disappointed. All right, so last on here, this last CD I'm going to talk about, uh, this is, well, we're, we're going to talk about a band called Pain. Uh, this is their debut album called Broken Dreams. Uh, this came out back in 2007. So, uh... A band called Band, uh, excuse me, a band called Pain. They were actually, uh, they're actually a hard rock band, heavy metal band formed in Oakland, California. Uh, interesting though, uh, the lead vocalist Alan Richardson, uh, he used to be in an R and B duo called uh, Christian that was signed to Rockefeller Records. You know Jay Z. Uh, this record was actually, this record, and this band, they were actually the only heavy metal act to sign to Hyrule Imperium. Recording. So to all my hip hop watchers out there, Hyro Imperium Recordings, you know, that's the iconic independent record label known hip hop label owned by Hieroglyphics, the Hieroglyphics Hip Hop Collective. And that's where that's where this album was released from. And I remember because I was heavy into Hieroglyphics around this time. I remember seeing this album being promoted on their website when I would go on to it. But man, this this album, Broken Dreams. You know, to me, it's a solid album of heavy metal tunes, man. I mean, there's a little bit of something for everybody that's into this style of music. You got the mainstream rock sound. Then you got some moments of heavy metal slash speed metal. There's even some influences of grunge and post-grunge. You know, I there's a few songs that gave me a little bit of Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, and Creed vibes. There's also a lot of social commentary and political lyrics as well. Uh, if I had one criticism about this album, though... I think that it runs a bit too long. You know, 17 tracks, but when once it gets to the end, it kind of starts to drag along a little bit. That's just me personally. And I feel like there's a couple of songs that may have may have could have been left off. They I don't know, it, it kind of felt like they were trying to they were trying to go for that radio play. So it has kind of like that generic radio rock sound that to me really didn't fit with the rest of the songs on the record. So I kind of felt like they could have cut those couple of songs off and it would have been fine. But other than that, man, Broken Dreams, it, you know, this is a solid metal album and it's worth giving a spin, man. So I, I really enjoyed this. I wish I would have got into this back in 2007 when I first discovered the band because I remember listening to like samples of the music on Hyrule, Hyrule Imperium's website. But for whatever reason, I didn't get around to buying it. I guess because I wasn't really into... uh online shopping at that at that particular point and i probably 2007 i doubt i really had the bread to do that but better late than never uh i think this was a i think this is a solid record man so definitely one that i think everybody should go check out again this is another one that's available on spotify matter of fact everything that i just talked about is available on spotify 
So uh, definitely go check it out, stream it. Uh, if you find a physical copy, definitely pick it up. Some solid hard rock and heavy metal right here. Some really good music. All right, so uh, uh, that's it for this video. That's it for this CD update, update video. Again, CD update number 18. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this uh, this update on what I've purchased recently and what I'm listening to as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, uh, if, if you could do me a huge favor, please hit that thumbs up and give me a like. You know, it helps with the videos. Uh, as well as uh, hit that subscribe button and tap that bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new content. Uh, also, be sure to share this video uh, to different platforms, Facebook, wherever. Share it. Share it to any places that you think people, that you know people who will be interested in this type of stuff. Uh also, I want to thank everybody that's been supporting me, uh, supporting the videos, watching the videos, leaving comments and so forth. I really appreciate it. And uh, as always, hope everybody has a blessed day, a blessed week. Love, peace, and music. Peace out, y'all.